Hi everyone, my name is Theo. I'm a PhD student in the Julia lab at MIT. And this talk is going to be about how we can pull some techniques from randomized numerical linear algebra into the world of optimization and use them to significantly speed up solvers. And this is joint work with Zach, Bartolomeo, Madeline, and Shipu. There are many ways that we can speed up optimization solvers. One is to speed up convergence for a particular problem. This means converging to the optimal solution in fewer iterations. This might be from some new algorithm that we come up with, or perhaps we find an algorithm that's better suited for a particular problem. Another way we can do this is by better parameter selection for existing algorithms or adaptive parameter selection. This might be the step size in a gradient descent type algorithm um, and so on. Another way that we can speed up optimization is to take an existing algorithm, look at what's required to take one iteration or to compute one iteration of that algorithm, and then trying to speed up that computation. So we speed up wall clock time, but we're not actually converging in fewer iterations. And I'm sure there are many other ways to speed up optimization, but for the purposes of this talk, we're going to really focus on how to speed up the iterations of existing algorithms. And in particular, we're going to concentrate on quadratic programs. So these are convex optimization problems of the form minimize some quadratic function, where P is going to be um, assumed to be positive semi-definite, subject to linear equality constraints and inequality constraints. And our method of choice is going to be ADMM, as implemented in the OSQP solver, which consists of the following steps in each iteration. First, x is updated with a linear system solve. Then z is updated by projecting onto the interval L, U. And finally, y, which is the dual variable, is updated with a simple gradient step. And here, the linear system is going to be by far the dominant computational step in each iteration. And this really dominates the solve time. It's the only cubic step here. So, this leads us to the idea that if we can speed up this bottleneck, so if we can get a really fast linear system solve, we can have much faster ADMM for QPs. And the method that we're going to do for this is to construct a really good preconditioner for an indirect solver like conjugate gradient. And just as a little bit of a teaser as to what's to come, we construct what's called a Nystrom preconditioner and our method can speed up convergence quite significantly by a factor of 4 to 5 for a very low upfront overhead um, compared to having no preconditioner for conjugate gradient or having a diagonal preconditioner, which is a very common heuristic that's used. And we'll return to this example later. So what does the rest of the talk look like? First, we're going to talk a lot about linear systems. We're going to talk about how to precondition them, what the theory for that looks like, how to construct grid preconditioners, um, and what types of theoretical guarantees we have on those. Then we're going to look at the implementation of that, which is in this package, randomized preconditioners.jl. We'll look at some examples of that applied to large-scale linear systems. And then finally, we'll bring it back to optimization and look at how this can be used in OSQP and what types of results we have. And then we'll wrap up at the end with some future work and pointers to the open source code. So we are going to want to focus on solving the linear system AX equals B. And in particular, we're going to assume that the system is large and has the form or the matrix has the form A plus mu I, where A is positive semi-definite and mu is some non-negative parameter. We assume the system has a unique solution, so the matrix is going to be positive definite. When I say large here, I just mean that a direct solve is not computationally feasible, so we're forced to use an iterative method like conjugate gradient. However, um, while we concentrate on positive definite systems, these ideas can be extended to other symmetric systems. Um, the non-symmetric case is actually a little bit harder, and I'll talk about that a bit at the end. So our method of choice for solving the system is going to be the conjugate gradient method. This only requires matrix vector products, so it just requires us to be able to multiply some vector v by the matrix A. 
And this method converges quickly when the condition number of the matrix A is small or the eigenvalues of A are clustered. So on the left, here are two spectra that are easy for the conjugate gradient method. One is flat, so its condition number is one. Um, the other one has only two distinct eigenvalues, um, so this is a spec uh, clustered spectrum. On the right, we have some spectra that are hard for CG. Both of these have slow decays, um, so they would have high condition numbers, and you can see they're not clustered at all. Unfortunately, the third one, or the first one that is hard for CG, is oftentimes what we see in the real world, where a lot of times we have this kind of low rank structure that's present in real world data. Um, and ideally what we'd wanna do is figure out some way to make this flat, to make this spectrum flat. So that would look like taking those first 25 eigenvalues and squashing them down so that they're the same level as the rest of the spectrum. And to do this, we can use a good preconditioner. Preconditioner is essentially a matrix that we multiply with to make the spectrum of A nice. And there are two properties that we have to have. Um, the second one here is that when we apply this preconditioner, so you're multiplying on both sides by P to um, inverse, the square root of P inverse is the same as pre-multiplying by P inverse. Um, this is going to have a nice spectrum for CG. However, we also need to be able to apply P inverse easily. So, for example, one really nice preconditioner would just be to take A inverse. However, that's not going to necessarily be feasible because it's not easily evaluated. However, our general approach here is we're going to figure out exactly what we want, and then we're going to approximate it. So we're going to find the best possible preconditioner, and instead of computing it exactly, which is quite slow, it's actually essentially the same amount of time as solving the linear system, we're going to borrow techniques from randomized numerical linear algebra to make a fast approximation. First, what does the best preconditioner look like? We are going to assume that we have access to some rank k eigen decomposition, so that's vk, lambda k, vk transpose, and the k plus first eigenvalue, lambda k plus one. If we had this, the ideal preconditioner would look uh, like this here, so you can see what p is here, the first term, and recall we're going to apply p inverse. So all this first term is doing is it's going to invert the dominant eigenspace, and then replace all those eigenvalues with lambda k plus one plus mu. The second term, the i minus vk vk transpose, is just going to leave the rest of the eigenvalues alone. And so this p actually admits a explicit and cheap to apply inverse once we have this decomposition. And you can see that the condition number of the system is going to be quite small. Um, as I talked about, talked through, we're essentially going to replace the first through kth eigenvalue with lambda k plus one plus mu, and then the last eigenvalue is going to be lambda n plus mu. So the preconditioned system, um, the condition number is going to be quite small when lambda k plus one is close to mu or when it's close to lambda n. However, this is essentially impossible to compute exactly in a very efficient way, or computing it is going to be really expensive, as expensive as just solving the system. So we're going to use this structure called the Nystrom sketch to give us an approximate eigen decomposition. Um, and this object has the form given on the slide. And essentially, it gives us a um, decomposition of an approximation of A. Omega here is just going to be a random test matrix. And a common choice for this sketching matrix is the standard normal Gaussian. This expression on the slide isn't usually what you'd actually put in Julia. If you tried to write this into Julia, you'd probably get a numerical error. Um, so you have to have a little bit more care in actually implementing this, and there's a reference implementation that we have in open source software. However, this form looks kind of weird, and what it actually comes from is a best fit problem. So the Nystrom sketch is the solution to the optimization problem. Find the best approximation to some matrix A um, measured in the Frobenius norm um, such that the range of the approximation is within the range of, a, of the sketch of A. 
So as long as that sketching matrix captures a significant part of kind of the dominant eigenspace of A, this approximation should be quite good. And in fact, we have some nice theoretical guarantees that tell us that this works well if the spectrum decays. The, nor the expected value of the norm of the approximation depends on the tail eigenvalues. So essentially, if we choose R, which is our sketching parameter, large enough, and K here, we can assume to be a little bit less than R, so maybe R minus 5. But if R is large enough, and if we essentially just uh, capture the dominant eigenspace, then this um, norm is going to be bounded by the tail. In addition, we have a result that tells us that the system is going to be well-conditioned in expectation as well, assuming that we choose R large enough. Now let's get to how to use this in Julia. We implemented this technique in the package randomizedPreconditioner.jl. This package gives a really easy interface for constructing the Nystrom preconditioner. You simply sketch the matrix with parameters R, which is the total sketch size, and K, which a lot of times is a little bit less than R, like I mentioned, something like R minus 5. And essentially that just chops off the tail of the approximation, which is much more subject to numerical error. And this gives you the sketch. And then you build the preconditioner directly from the sketch and that parameter mu. In addition, you can get P inverse, which is required by some CG solvers instead. And we can use multiple dispatch in Julia to implement very efficient um, LDIV for P and an efficient multiply for P inverse. And so these preconditioners can be easily passed into any Julia native iterative solver. For example, if you use Krylov.jl, you just pass in P inverse, and everything else looks exactly the same as you'd call it normally. If you use iterative solvers, you pass in P, and these are going to, you know, the nice features of Julia are going to allow us to very easily pass these preconditioners in with essentially almost zero code modification. In addition to the Nystrom sketch, which is for positive semi-definite matrices, we have the Eigen sketch, which is for symmetric matrices, very similar idea, and the randomized SVD, um, which is for general matrices. Here you see this powering parameter Q, which is going to linearly increase the time it takes to construct a sketch, but is going to actually give you some amount of more accuracy. And so all these parameters have to be chosen by the user. These sketches come with several utilities, for instance, fast multiplication, because all of these are stored in their factored form. Um, we could use that to overload multiply so it's quite a bit faster with the sketches. In addition, we have some tools for adaptive sketch size selection. So this adaptive sketch function is going to take A, going to take some initial sketch size, and it's going to sketch A with that initial sketch size and check what the norm is between the sketch and the original matrix A. And it checks this norm with a randomized power method, so it's quite efficient to do. If that norm is really large, it's going to double the sketch size and do this again. And you can actually reuse some computation when you're doubling the sketch size, depending on the sketch matrix that you use. But if you use a standard normal, you can. And it's going to do this until the norm is sufficiently small. So this is one way to get around choosing some of the parameters for sketching if you're given some general matrix that you don't really know anything about. Okay, so now let's see how this package performs with some real-world examples. First, we looked at ridge regression with the Guillermo dataset from OpenML, which has 4.3 thousand features, so the matrix that is going to be that we're going to be looking at and the a matrix is going to be 4.3 thousand by 4.3 thousand and essentially you can see the spectrum has that low rank structure so if you look on the left those are the eigenvalues of a plotted on a log scale in addition to the regularization parameter we use for ridge regression mu which is 1 e negative 4 and you can see the slow decay of the spectrum up until about eigenvalue 2000, and then it's zero after that. On the right, you have the convergence of the conjugate gradient method to solve this linear system with a varying sketch size parameter. 
you can see even with a very low sketch size, um, so for example with a sketch size of 100, we still get something like a factor of 3 speed up in terms of convergence of conjugate gradient. And even though 100 is clearly way less than the dominant eigenspace as you can see on the left. So essentially this method seems to help in quite a number of cases, or in most cases, and it can never really hurt you. Of course, as you increase the sketch size, um, it's going to be much more expensive to construct the preconditioner. So as you can see, the, the preconditioner with sketch size 2000 causes this to converge almost instantly. However, that's going to require quite a bit of setup time. So at that point, it's not really worth it to go that high, or you're not going to get a total wall clock time speed up once you include the preconditioner plus conjugate gradient. For a little bit of a bigger data set, we're going to return to the teaser photo that I showed at first. This is ridge regression with 15,000 features, and it's solved in under five seconds on a laptop using the Nystrom preconditioner. So again, here, you see that here I think we chose the preconditioner to be 500, a sketch size of 500, and that performs significantly better than using no preconditioner or using the diagonal preconditioner. So for just the linear system solves, if you want to incorporate this into your solver, if you're interested in extending this, um, check out randomizedpreconditioners.jl. This actually works with a number of interfaces like the linear solve.jl interface. Um, if you want to learn more about some of the theoretical results here, check out Zach's paper on Nystrom um, precondition conjugate gradient, and also the Martinson and Trop survey on general numerical or randomized numerical linear algebra. And also, if you want to extend this package in any way, please reach out. We could use additional test matrices, for example, those for sparse matrices. We don't really have good support for that. And in addition, we don't have good preconditioners that work for non-symmetric systems right now. This is a bit of an open research question, and essentially everything that we've tried hasn't really worked yet. So if you're interested in doing this, um, please reach out. Happy to collaborate, or also just prevent you from going down some of the wrong roads that we did. Now, finally, let's move all the way back to optimization from kind of in the weeds of the linear system solves. Recall that OSQP solves quadratic, problem, uh, quadratic programs of the form minimize some quadratic convex quadratic function subject to linear equality and inequality constraints. And we can incorporate this technique into OSQP by just sketching the linear system matrix at the beginning and building the preconditioner and then putting this preconditioner into the conjugate gradient call in the linear system solve as part of the update steps. In addition, we can actually exploit some structure in this problem to update the preconditioner PC without resketching when the ADMM parameters change. This requires recognizing some structure in P and A and having a little bit more logic within the solver to handle this and some more heuristics versus just applying this kind of right out of the box. However, as you saw earlier, you could probably apply this right out of the box to a lot of solvers and do quite well. In fact, the first experiment I did with this um, several months ago was to implement a lasso regression solver for just that problem. And essentially, with just applying the, these techniques out of the box, you could do really, really well. For our OSQP test, we solve the bounded least squares problem, which is to minimize one half times the 2 norm of ax minus b, subject to x being constrained to be within um, the interval 0 to 1. And A here is, again, the Guillermo data set, which is 20,000 samples by about a little over 4,000 features. And the linear system matrix that pops out of this is A transpose A plus sigma plus rho times i. We sketch a transpose A, and then that, this allows us to very easily update the parameters in ADMM, so for instance, row, without actually having to resketch the matrix. We do the sketch once, and we can update the preconditioner by just changing the parameter. So let's see how this does. With a pretty low overhead, we can get a quite dramatic speed up. This problem converged in 72 iterations total, and this actually doesn't make a difference. The number of iterations, the outer iterations, the ADMM iterations, 
for convergence doesn't make um, or preconditioning is not going to change that because all preconditioning is going to do is going to make CG or conjugate gradient um, converge quicker. And so if we're using the same tolerance for when that linear system is solved, it's not going to change the total number of ADMM iterations. So essentially all you see here is a speed up of wall clock time, which is due to solving that linear system faster. And you see that preconditioning takes about two seconds, but it reduces the solve time quite dramatically by a factor of four to five, and that gives us a total time speed up of about a factor of four. And this is only 72 iterations for convergence. If you are applying this to an ADMM problem that required hundreds or thousands of iterations for convergence, or say uh, running this problem to a much higher tolerance, this would also this would actually give you a much better speed up because the preconditioning time would be amortized over quite a number of or quite a number of more iterations. And this is what the convergence of the residuals looks like. For red, you could see the primal residual dashed and the dual residual. So the solid line for the precondition the Nystrom preconditioned um, linear system. And then without the preconditioner, you can see the blue. So again, we see a quite dramatic speed up in terms of wall clock time. So let's finally wrap this up. We saw that randomized numerical linear algebra has powerful primitives for optimization. Solver iteration bottlenecks are often linear algebra operations, like linear system solves. And so these randomized techniques can give significant speed ups for existing algorithms. In addition, as we saw with OSQP, these techniques are usually incorporated easily and with low overhead. However, a challenge is parameter tuning, some of the parameters I mentioned before, uh, like the sketch size, for general purpose solvers. So we want this to work if you give us any problem which is conditioned however it is, and uh, we want to be able to apply these methods well, which right now this is still a challenge that we need good heuristics for. This, of course, suggests several lines for future work. On the randomized preconditioner side for linear system solves, we want to add additional test matrices and provide better support for sparse matrices. In addition, we want to add general preconditioners for non-symmetric systems. And then we're also building a solver which we call NICE OSQP, which is OSQP in native Julia, written with um, incorporating these preconditioners in this. And we're working on adding a jump interface for this. In addition, recognizing and exploiting structure that shows up in the linear system here, an example of which I mentioned earlier, and then also figuring out heuristics to tune these parameters. So this is a, can be a pretty general purpose solver. Here are the references I mentioned, including the paper, Zach's paper on randomized Nystrom preconditioning, the survey I mentioned earlier, um, and then in addition to the other references I mentioned in this talk. And thank you. Uh, please check out these packages, randomizedpreconditioners.jl, and then the forthcoming niceosqp.jl. Well, depending, given this talk is pre-recorded, we'll see that could be out at this point. And then also don't hesitate to reach out uh, via email. Thank you very much.